We're now moving on to look at section 1.4 chemical formula and moles and in this first video we're going to concentrate on chemical formula. The chemical formula for elements is very straightforward. For the vast majority of elements the chemical formula is just its symbol. So for example if you have to write the chemical formula for sodium it's just its symbol Na. Argon is just its symbol capital A small r. All you have to watch out, watch out for are the seven diatomic elements and these are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. In which case for example hydrogen, the chemical formula of hydrogen is not H, it's H2. Moving on now to compounds, the main way in which you work out the chemical formula of compounds is using valency rules. Now valency just tells you the number of bonds that that element forms and it's determined by what group of the periodic table it's in. So if your element is in group 1 of the periodic table it's got a valency of 1, it forms one bond. Group 2 is 2, 3, 3, 4, 4 and of course these numbers represent the number of electrons it has to lose in order to become have a full outer shell. But we get to group 5, uh, if it gains 3 electrons it will move up to 8 and have a full outer shell. So in group 5 the valency is 3, group 6 is 2, group 7 is 1 and group 0 is 0. Group 0 everything already has a full outer shell so it doesn't form any chemical bonds. So you must remember this pattern 1, 2, 3, 4 3, 2, 1, 0. So how do we use those rules? Well, if I ask to determine the chemical formula of calcium oxide, enzynide, so it only contains two elements, and those elements are calcium and oxygen. We look up the valencies of each element, calcium is in group 2, so it's got a valency of 2, oxygen in group 6, so it's also got a valency of 2. Now at this stage if you can simplify these numbers do so. So the thing is you can simplify if they're the same number 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4 or the only other one you're likely to come across if it's 2 and 4 which could be simplified to 1 and 2. So 2 and 2 can be simplified to 1 and 1 okay. and then you swap them over. So we've got 1 calcium and one oxygen. So the chemical formula is CaO. Let's run through another example. Magnesium fluoride, uh, enzynide, so it only contains two elements, magnesium and fluorine. Now note in both these cases oxygen and fluorine are diatomic elements but that has no consideration, totally ignore that when the element is in a compound. So if it's in a compound you just treat all the atoms the same. Okay, So don't put F2 for the, this is the symbol of fluorine we put in here, not its formula. So magnesium is in group 2, so it's got a valency of 2. Fluorine is in group 1, sorry group 7, so it's got a valency of 1, that can't be simplified. So we've got one magnesium and two fluorines, so it's MgF2. Right, so that's the basic rule which works for most compounds. The second rule is for those elements, those compounds which contain more than two elements. And you know it contains more than two elements because the name of the compound will end in 8 or 8. Okay. So if it ends in 8 or 8, it's going to contain more than two elements. That means it will contain a group ion. And you find all the information you need about group ions on page 8 of your data booklet. And here's an excerpt from it. Okay. So 
This table can be found in page 8 of your data booklet and it gives you all the group ions that you will come across at uh, National 5. So for example, sulphate tells you its chemical formula is SO4, whereas sulphite is SO3. So in this table you get the chemical formula of all the group ions and they all end in 8 or 8 with two exceptions, hydroxide which is OH and ammonium which is NH4. It also gives you the charges. Now come back to the charges later on but don't bother putting those charges in unless you ask for an ionic formula. We'll talk about ionic formula right at the end. So it's just a chemical formula, don't put the charges in. But the charges are important because they tell you the valency of the group ion. So if it's one positive, valency is one. One negative, it's one. Two negative, it's two. Three negative, it's three. So let's look at an example. So calcium sulfate. N's an eight, so you know it contains a group ion. So we've got calcium. Look up page eight to your data booklet tells you that sulphate is SO4. Don't put the charge in. Calcium, and it's a good idea to put the group ion in brackets. Calcium's got a valency of 2. Sulphate is 2 minus, so it's also got a valency of 2. So that simplifies to 1 and 1. So we've got 1 calcium and 1 sulphate. So we write the formula as Ca and because there's only one of the group ion, we can remove the brackets. So CaSO4, making sure it's a capital O, sulphur and oxygen. Okay, let's look at another example. Magnesium phosphate. So we've got magnesium, then phosphate is PO4, which I get from the data booklet, page 8. Magnesium's in group 2, phosphate is 3 minus, so it's got a valency of 3, let's remember to put that in brackets. Can't simplify 2 and 3, so I've got 3 magnesiums and 2 phosphates. Because I've got more than one of the phosphate, I will leave the brackets in. So it's Mg3PO4-2. And that's how you work out the chemical formula for things containing eight or eight. Right, rule three involves the transition elements or the transition metals. So all these elements in this area here and it also includes the two rows at the bottom which aren't shown in this picture. Now if you look at the periodic table, these transition metals lie in between group 2 and group 3. So we can't use our valency rules to determine how many bonds these are going to form. And in fact, these elements are famous for changing their valencies. Iron sometimes forms two bonds, sometimes three bonds. So they have to tell you in the question the valency of the transition metal. And they do that using Roman numerals. So if the valency is 1, they use a Roman numeral for 1. 2, 2. So you need to know your Roman numerals up to maybe about 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The two that you're likely to confuse are 4 and 6. I like to think of it. This is 1 before 5, so that's 4. And this is 1 after 5, so it's 6. So here's an example, copper is a transition metal, so the copper, 2 bromide, the 2 is telling me the valency of the copper. So we've got copper and bromine is Br, so that 2 there is telling me the valency of copper is 2, bromine is in group 7 so it's got a valency of 1, so we've got 1 copper and 2 bromines, CuBr2. Occasionally you'll get a chemical formula like this in which they tell you the valency of an element which isn't actually a transition metal. 
just occasionally some of the heavy elements don't quite follow the normal valency rules and that's the case they would tell you the valency of it in the question so although it would normally be transition metals if they ever use these roman numerals in a chemical name it's telling you the valency of the element and the final rule for chemical formula is that sometimes the valency rules don't work and they use prefixes to tell you the formula so you should know the prefixes from 1 to 6 mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa so for example carbon monoxide is telling me we've got carbon and one oxygen so it's CO whereas carbon dioxide is telling me I've got carbon and two oxygens so it's CO2 we assume there's just one of the first element they don't actually put monocarbon monoxide uh, if it's just one of the first element they don't put a prefix on this next example there's more than one of the first element so they do put a prefix in dinitrogen pentoxide so two nitrogens and five oxygens so it's N2O5 and finally silicon tetrachloride so that means there's one silicon and four chlorines so in this case they're not telling you the valencies of the elements they're just telling you the chemical formula straight out okay so now that we can write chemical formula for almost all compounds we can turn word equations into chemical equations and then balance them so lead this is PB chlorine it's a diatomic element so it's Cl2 and lead 6 chloride so you work out the chemical formula you don't just add these two things together so lead 6 chloride so it's PB and Cl it's telling me the lead is 6 chlorine is in group 7 so it's 1 so it's PbCl6 so there's our chemical equation at National 5 you often be given chemical equations and asked to write the balanced equation now, is this balanced? well we've got one lead two chlorines on the left hand side on the right hand side we've got one lead and six chlorines so the leads are balanced but the chlorines aren't we've got two here and six here you can't balance it by changing the chemical formula all you can do is add more so instead of having one lot of Cl2 we could have three lots of Cl2 so three molecules of chlorine which would contain six chlorines so we now have six chlorines on either side and it's balanced one more example so calcium just Ca water we just know is H2O we don't need to work that out calcium hydroxide right, we need to work out what that is so calcium of course hydroxide is one of those group ions which doesn't end in eight or eight just put that in brackets so calcium's got a valency of two hydroxide a valency of one so we've got Ca OH twice so we'll put that in Ca OH twice plus hydrogen which is diatomic so it's H2 okay so on the left hand side we've got one calcium two hydrogens and one oxygen whereas on the right hand side we've got one calcium two lots of OH so we've got two oxygens two hydrogens there and two hydrogens there so four hydrogens in total so the calcium is balanced but the oxygens and hydrogens aren't so I'm going to need to add more H2O to this side so if I make that two lots of water so I now have four hydrogens in this side and I've got four hydrogens in this side 
two oxygens on this side, two oxygens on this side, so that's now balanced. And once we've got a balanced equation, we can then do some calculations based on balanced equations, which we'll look at in the next video. Last thing sometimes we do to states to uh, chemical equations is adding state symbols. So state symbol S we tell me I've got sodium chloride solid. The L means the substance is a liquid. This would be bromine, which is one of the only two elements which is a liquid at room temperature. G means the substance is a gas. Here we've got nitrogen gas. And probably the most confusing one is AQ, which means the substance is dissolved in water. So this would be sodium chloride dissolved in water. Okay. So solid, liquid, gas, and dissolved in water. And finally, very occasionally you get asked to write an ionic formula. Don't write an ionic formula unless you're asked for it. Normally you're asked for chemical formula. But just occasionally, you'll get asked, probably once in your National 5 exam, you'll be asked to do an ionic formula. Now you can only write ionic formula for ionic compounds. Now, if you worked out the chemical formula of potassium chloride, so it's K and Cl, both got a valency of 1, so it's KCl is its chemical formula. In the ionic formula, you have to put in the charges of the positive and negative ion. Now, the metal is always the positive ion, so the K will be the positive ion, and what you have to decide is it 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus. It depends on the valency. The valency of potassium is 1, so it's K plus, just 1 plus. Chlorine, the non-metal, always forms a negative ion, Sphernity is 1, so Cl1 minus, so Cl minus. That's the chemical formula, that's the ionic formula. Do one final one. Aluminium oxide, metal to non metal, so it's ionic. So aluminium's got a valency of 3, oxygen 2, so its chemical formula <coughs> is Al2O3. Now to turn it into an ionic formula, when aluminium is the metal, it will be positive. It's got a valency of 3, so it will be 3 plus. So each aluminium ion is 3 plus. Now if there's more than one of the ion, you've got to put the ion in brackets in your ionic formula. So the aluminium is 3 plus, and we've got two of them. And the oxygen is minus. It's got a valency of 2, so it's 2 minus, and we've got 3 of them. And if you check at the end, that the positive charges and negative charges balance each other. So we've got 2 lots of Al3+, plus, so that comes to 6 plus. Whereas here we've got 3 lots of 2 minus, it comes to 6 minus, and they balance each other. So that gives you reassurance that you have done it correctly. So, <coughs> five things you must be able to do. You should be able to write the chemical formula for all the elements, including the seven diatomics. Use valency rules to work out the chemical formula of compounds containing two or more elements. If it's more than two elements, use the group ion table in your data book. You should be able to work out the chemical formula of compounds the names contain prefixes, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. You should be able to balance chemical equations and recognise state symbols. And finally, you should be able to work out ionic formula.